All right, so this video we're going to be mostly looking at uh, just setting up the control mechanisms to touch left or touch right on the screen. It doesn't sound that exciting, uh, but we do get to touch on some um, kind of important uh, initial topics, just like the uh, the first video. If you're kind of unfamiliar with setting up a you know multi-targeted system, there's some cool stuff in here too. So um, what we're going to do is uh, begin by taking our touches began statement out of this actual class. Now, it's, well, it's going to stay in the game scene class, but what we're going to do is make a new file. So go over here to uh, file and go over here to source. This time around, it doesn't matter if you're in the iOS or tvOS. You just make a Swift file. Same thing either way. And we're going to say game scene. And then let's go over here and um, call this um, uh, touches. And we're going to make the target for this both the uh, pinball TV and the pinball iOS. So just go over here and create this. Although a lot of what is going to be put in here is mostly for the um, the iOS. It's just it's code. It's not going to take up much space. And um, and from here, what we're going to do is say import sprite kit. After that, you're going to write extension, and you just put in here game scene. And now we can paste in. Oops, go over here to our this code. So drag or uh, cut that out of there. Go over here to this, and it is like they are all one file now. Okay, so all we've done is we've extended our game scene to this. We're not subclassing it or anything like that. It's really just an organizational thing. And uh, for you kind of long-time developers, you know that if you write too much code in one file, it, it definitely starts to kind of lag things down. You know, down uh, the compiler or the uh, code syntax helper, all that good stuff. It just comes to a crawl at, at a certain point. So, we're going to do this with a lot of the game scene files. Uh, now, what we're going to do is head back over to here and give yourself a little bit of breathing room between this line and our did move to view statement. And we're going to put in here some variables. The first one of these is going to be scene width and the keyword here is scene okay it's not the screen width it has only a loose association with the devices you know points you know running across the screen this is our actual scene so what we defined as the scene dimensions in our SKS files is what we're going to get back from this, okay? And get back over to there. Uh, just initially, we're going to set these to uh, zero. Then, of course, uh, what we're going to do is let uh, the actual app define the width. So come in here to your did move to view statement, and we're going to say scene width is going to equal self dot frame dot width and let's uh, print that out and obviously if you kind of see where this is going we're going to um, use this as a way of figuring out if, if you touch on the left or the right side of the screen uh, so I'll go over here and uh, let's just run this real quick ignore that little warning for now and uh, what we should get back is that our scene width, we don't even need to see the simulator, is 1080. Okay, so that's the size that we set up for the iPhone. Um, now, I just want to illustrate something. Uh, let's uh, copy out these two lines, and we're going to make a new variable, which we're just going to toss out in a moment, but uh, let, and this is going to be CG float. Uh, this time around, what we're going to do is write self.view. Bounds dot width and take a look at that. Oh, whoops! I have to put in there. What do I got to put in there? That's funny because you know what? Let's try it like that. Odd that that would make a difference. That's okay. We're going to throw that out in just a moment. I want to show you guys that um, you can see, and I'm in the iPhone 6S, not the uh, the Plus, the screen width is 375. Now remember what we were doing before. We're going to make our scene intentionally bigger so we can use those 1X images, which just gets, which just gets sized down, so they are going to appear to be 3X images. Um, but uh, that'll give you an indication of, you know, what 
the, you know, these are the dimensions of the phone itself. All right. And if we had it for our six plus, that's going to be 414, I believe, on the width in uh, portrait mode. So this could trip you up if you're, you know, just starting out development and, um, you, you know, you're getting some strange numbers when you try to, you know, spit back some of these things. And, you, you know, if you get, uh, if you Google or you're on Stack Overflow, you know, how do I get the screen dimensions? Uh, do note that there is a difference between what would be considered the actual scene and the actual screen. So get rid of that. Um, let's put another variable in here. Or actually, we already got the variable. Scene height, height, and at least for a little while, we'll leave those guys uh, printing out inside of there. All right, now let's um, come right back up here to the top again, and we are going to put in here a little if statement that says if OS TV OS. And then we can close this off by writing end if over here. And we can plug in variables that are going to be specific to our TV application. And of course, you could do the same thing for your iOS. You can go over here and say iOS. <coughs> Excuse me. And right after you type the iOS ones, go ahead and copy those. And let's go back over to our touches file. We're going to paste these guys in and see if I can illustrate a good example of why we are doing this. Uh, inside of here, this, uh, well, the code in our touches began statement is actually going to run for the uh, TV OS as well as the iOS, even though you're never really touching. Uh, the screen on the TV, but this will run anyway, and um, that's why in, it, we're going to do this little, you know, if based on the device inside of here. So watch this. Let's uh, write if location dot x is less than our scene width divided by two. What that means is that we have tapped left on the screen. So we're going to make a function called tapped left, which we have to actually write. We'll go do that in a moment. And of course, if this is not the case, then you must have tapped on the other side of the screen, right? There's really kind of no other thing to assume there. Uh, so let's uh, let's go back over here to our game scene for right now. And um, I'll write these functions just so I'm not writing at the bottom of the screen for you guys. Tapped left. Right. Okay. And then I'm also going to print out our location. You'll notice that I'm doing this, or the x value of the location. And you'll notice I'm doing this outside of this block right here because I want to test this on both the iPhone and the um, and the TVOS. And I forgot one little thing. Let's uh, put a print statement in here that we're just going to kind of note in the output window that we've actually tapped left or tapped right. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Uh, first one we'll do is the uh, the iPhone, and this will be some of the most boring testing we could possibly do in this lesson. There you go. You've got tap to the left, 244 over here, and you'll notice as I edge closer and closer, tapping toward the middle of the screen, it's still showing me left. I'm at 522 there. Remember, half of this is what is going to trigger uh, going over to the right. So. Let's see, our last one over here, our most recent one is 583, tapped right, and, and so on, all the way over here to you know about the edge of the screen. All right, so that seems to be working correctly. Now let's go see what happens if we target the Apple TV. I'll try to do as much of this in the simulator as I can for now, because I know not all of you have any. Apple TV yet. And of course we get that stupid error. One more time. Third time's usually a charm. Uh, hold down Control Command R. It's a good hotkey to start to learn. All that's gonna do is bring up the hardware remote. Although I don't know why it wasn't doing it. Here we go. And now um, kind of click into here anywhere that sort of activates the remote. And then hold down the option key. And you'll notice, you know, where your mouse is at inside of here essentially means you're touching the screen, right? So as you go around here, you'll see that 
every time you press down, you're getting the same X location, all right? Uh, and that's just because this is how the remote works. Wherever you push down or wherever you touch down in the little touch area of the remote, it's basically always render, rendered as the very center point of the screen. And you can see why then we would not want to do some sort of testing uh, like we had in our touches file for the uh, the tvOS. But a thing to note here is that the touches are actually getting ready. I mean, we're, you know, this this whole block is actually uh, running. Okay, so it's something to kind of watch out for at the same time. So with that in mind, uh, let's go and um, I would say probably at this point we could take all of this out from inside of here and just make this entire thing, you know, for the I iOS only. Um, shouldn't see any errors at that point. The um, the TV really doesn't care <laughs> about these this f this entire function, okay? And uh, I can't think of another reason, thinking ahead, <laughs> that we're going to use our touch as a began statement. All right, so, uh, so you might be wondering then, what are we going to do to touch the screen or how are we going to uh, trigger our left and right? All right, well, go back over here to our uh, game scene.swift file and inside of this little block, what we're going to do is add in a couple tap gestures. And the first one here is going to be written as uh, let. Oh, I guess it doesn't have to go over there. Let tap left. This is going to equal UI tap gesture recognizer. And go ahead and just copy out this line for the right side as well. And again, I'm going to, I mentioned this before, but I'm going to preface it one more time that uh, this is ultimately not how we're going to interact with the screen, but this is a good way to get things up and running as a just you know just for testing purposes. And who knows, maybe you'll find this code useful one day. But um, there's a much fancier way of detecting touches on the screen, but it's also a much more involved one. So we're gonna have to just dedicate an entire video to that. But I'm not really looking forward to teaching it either, so <laughs> But it also coincides with using external controllers as well. Uh, all right, so UI press type. I'll, I'll explain this a little bit better once I'm done typing it. And I believe this is a closing parentheses, closing bracket, self dot view dot add gesture recognizer. There's our tap left. All right, so I've got one of them set up here. We're saying uh, tap left dot add target, and the target is going to be this function right here. So I'm sorry, the, the target is the self. The action is going to be that whenever we tap on the left side of the screen, or left side of the remote in this case, uh, we're going to run this function. And you can see that um, our tap left gesture recognizer, the allowed press types for this are this NS number, really just kind of boils down to this chunk right here, which is UI press type left arrow. So if you can imagine, you know, if you kind of drew on with a Sharpie, a little left arrow on the left side of your Apple TV remote, that's what you're uh, tapping into. And um, this is not considered an actual, like kind of press down, like a click, because you actually can do a little select click with the remote. This is just a tap on that side. And then of course we're adding the gesture recognizer here at the end. And we're gonna do that same exact thing for right so tap right tap right tap right this goes that's tap right tapped right I should say and of course this one is then going to be right arrow okay and once you've done that you should now be able to test okay so go over here I'm just holding down the option key all right so the mouse is kind of floating over here and again, I'm not actually clicking down with the mouse. Uh, now I'm venturing over to the left side. So you can see it's, uh, it's kind of right in the middle there. You can go back and forth. If you're up here, you're not going to do anything because these are considered the up and the down parts of it, which uh, you, know, you could use for something else, maybe initiating the plunger. But uh, there we go. And um, uh, obviously, this uh, the code that we had of doesn't interfere with our iOS version, but this could certainly interfere with our, I'm sorry, did I say that right? 
No, this TV code could interfere with our iOS version. So what we need to do is encapsulate all this inside of here. Because if we try to run, it's really this line right here that, that messes up the iPhone versions. So, you know, as we're kind of working back and forth here, we should always be, you know, checking both of them. And really, all we, you don't even have to do a full build. If you just go over here and run it, it should almost immediately tell you if you put in something here that, you know, doesn't translate to the iPhone world or is just not part of the library. All right, so... Uh, that's a, a good starting a good stopping point for this video and uh, we'll pick it up right here in the next one.